Hello, my name is Tina from Victoria Designs and today I have for you the fourth and final part of our Treasures of Nature series, the Animal Kingdom Kit. If you're wondering what I mean with Treasures of Nature series, I recommend watching the first video, there's a link below. In short, it's a series of four kits of printables that belong together, with four amazing tutorials that together form one whole big project. The first kit was Butterfly Team, the second kit Birds Team, the third kit Flower Team, and now this fourth and final kit Animal Teamed. Alexandra made different tutorials for journals with all four parts and also an extra tutorial to keep all these books in one place, a journal station. In this tutorial, Alexandra will show you how to make the fourth journal with the printables of our Animal Kingdom kit. And she'll also show you how to make a pencil stand to complete the whole set. The tutorials for the journal station and the other journals and even more are already published on our YouTube channel. I recommend these tutorials for more experienced crafters. Alexandra explains things very good into detail, but some parts go a bit quicker, so it might be helpful if you already have a bit of experience making journals. But of course, you can use these beautiful principles for a ton of other crafts as well. If you'd like to see more of Alexandra's amazing tutorials, head on over to her YouTube channel, the link is below. And if you would like to make this journal or any other craft project with the printables of our Animal Kingdom kit, you can discover everything in my Etsy shop, the link is below as well. And now here's Alexandra. Enjoy! Hello everyone, it's Alexandra. Welcome back. I have finished the fourth part in the series of tutorials for making a junk journaling station and nature-themed journals to go along with it. Thank you Victoria Designs for your inspiring paper collections. If you are not familiar with Victoria Designs digital papers, please uh, check them out in their Etsy store. Uh, the link will be down below. Looking back, we started with making the station itself absolutely from scratch out of medium weight chipboard. The first theme and the first paper collection that we worked with was called Butterfly Beauty. The second theme was related to um, the world of birds and the collection was called Early Birds. Besides the journal number two, we also created an ephemera holder, which was supposed to be stored in one of the journaling station drawers. The third journal was about the flowers. We used a collection called uh, The World of Flowers for that one. I really like how the journal with the see-through windows on the cover turned out. I have tried to create journals that will look similar in style but still have different features inside and I really hope that you learned something new or maybe got new ideas while working along with me on each one of those journals. If you did I would be very happy. And today I'm back to share the fourth journal which features the collection called Animal Kingdom. To complete our absolutely gorgeous handmade set, I created a pencil holder. Being quite simple, it is super useful and can make your working space look uh, pretty and unique. In the today's tutorial, I'm going to give you all the measurements and show you how to make the pencil holder, of course the journal as well, but also <laughs> the pencil holder. Once I was done filming, I decided to add uh, these charms with the letters and I um, had a hard time finding a way of attaching them to the pencil holder at first and then after some thinking uh, this is what I came up with. I added jump rings to each one of these uh, round pendants and I put them on a string. I also added um, eyelets to the pencil holder for a prettier look of the holes because um, the holes without the eyelets looked um, quite weird. <laughs> Moving back to the journal itself, I want to flip through its pages without talking too much and just let you enjoy the uh, beautiful graphics and images on each page. Victoria Designs papers are very recognizable in my opinion and they're really really pretty and amazing. Let me show you how it looks from the top and 
on the sides and here is a spine with uh, some charms and beads that I have added to it. Of course, I also had to add the number four uh, charm to the spine of this book since all the previous books also had their numbers on them. So the journal has a ribbon closure here and let's dive in. And before we begin the flip through itself, I also want to say that the leaves here, first of all, are not from the paper collection. They are 3D embossed and die cut paper leaves that I have created using one of the uh, dies from um, Tim Holtz and Sizzix. Then I have also used some yellow uh, tape throughout the pages of the journal and that tape comes on a roll like this. I purchased it from Amazon. Um, I think it's some kind of thermal tape if I'm not mistaken. I really like how this yellow pop of color adds character to this book. If you want to create this journal together with me, please watch the tutorials, have fun crafting, and thanks for hanging out with me. Talk to you soon. Bye! Let me walk you through the sizes of the chipboard pieces that we're going to use for creating our journal cover. Two of the medium weight chipboard pieces that I have right here are eight and three quarters of an inch by six inches and two of the chipboard pieces that I have on my left hand side measure eight and three quarters by five 
I decided to use medium weight chipboard for the outer part of the cover and the lightweight chipboard for the parts of the cover that will fold in. We will also need two pieces of cardstock for the narrower spines of our journal and one piece of cardstock for the wider spine so the two narrower ones will measure eight and three quarters by one and five eighths. Both of those pieces will have to be scored at half an inch on the short side, at half an inch from the left and the right edge, so that you get this. This piece for the wider outer spine will measure eight and three quarters of an inch by two and five eighths. And again, you will find the measurements in centimeters on your screen as well. This piece will also have to be first of all scored at half an inch on the short side from the left and the right edges and then the um, space in between two of those square lines you will score at every one eighth of an inch. And this curve will help us build a nice looking spine later on in the tutorial. I'll start working with the medium chipboard covers first and with the piece of the spine which is wider. I'm going to apply the glue first to one of the flaps and attach one of the chipboard covers to it and then do the same on the opposite side and this will form the base of my cover. When you apply the glue to the flaps of the spine just make sure that the curve is going this way. So the glue will be applied right here and then the chipboard piece will be glued down on top. Okay, our base cover is ready. I'm going to wrap it in fabric. The piece of fabric that I have right here, I have prepared it ahead of time. That piece should be uh, large enough to let you wrap the chipboard pieces with the spine in fabric and have the flaps on the left and on the right, as well as at the top and at the bottom. I'm going to use glue stick for attaching the chipboard pieces and the cardstock to the fabric. I will start with applying the glue to the uh, spine first. Right after I apply the glue, I take the cover to my ironing board and I iron on top of the fabric in that area where um, I have applied the glue. That ensures a really good bond between the fabric and the cardstock. I have been doing it for a very long time. I have never had any problems. So I'm going to start with the uh, area here on the spine and then I will apply glue to one of the sides of the cover, adhere the fabric, take it to the ironing board, and then do the same with the remaining side. Once you're done with this step, you're going to apply the glue on the right hand side of the cover and on the left hand side of the cover and glue these side flaps onto the chipboard. Don't forget to iron. That's what we have so far. I want to move now to the uh, narrow spines that we have set aside. So you are going to fold the flaps so that it's easier for you to work with these pieces later on. Okay. 
just like that. And we are also going to cover them with fabric. I have here two strips that I have prepared. They are about one and a quarter of an inch wide and they are slightly longer or taller than the spines that I have right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, apply the glue to the outer side of the spine, glue the fabric piece on top, take this to my ironing board, make sure that you center the fabric on top of the paper. Now iron and work on the second piece. Here we have the fabric adhered to one side of the cardstock pieces and we will need two more fabric strips to cover the inside of the spines and the strips that I have here are um, the same width as the ones that we used for the outside. They are about one and a quarter of an inch. They're, as you can see, not as wide as the paper. And I do it for a reason because um, I need to see the edges of paper for later on when I'm adhering everything and assembling the cover together. The flaps here are not glued down yet. I'm going to glue them down right now from both sides. We'll move to the strips that will be used on the inside. First of all, I want to reinforce again the flaps on the sides of the spines. And now I'll take the next strip and first of all I'll fold maybe half an inch in from one of the edges make a crease there with my uh, fingernail apply the glue and glue that flap now with that little folded piece facing up, I'm going to uh, put the fabric strip on top of the paper strip like that. Keep the fold maybe 1 16th of an inch away from the actual edge of the cardstock. Clip it with the paper clip to the cardstock. And now I'm trying to center the fabric on top of the cardstock piece and I'll use my ruler so that I could see how far the fabric needs to reach and where exactly I need to create my second crease. So I'm folding the fabric on top of the ruler and I'm making sure that the ruler keeps the fabric piece about the same uh, 1 16th of an inch away from the opposite edge of the cardstock piece. Okay, so let's do it again. I think I moved my piece just a little bit. Okay, and I'm trying to uh, pull by the fabric just a tiny bit to make sure that it's straight. Okay, so folding again and creating that crease. Now I will just use my scissors and cut the excess fabric so that I have about half an inch away from the crease. Apply the glue, fold the fabric back and take it to the ironing board and that's what we have right now the fabric strip which is a little bit shorter than the um, cardstock piece and we're now ready to glue it down
both of the narrower spines will have to be uh, treated the same way. Next I'm going to take it to my sewing machine and stitch here and here about one eighth of an inch away from the edges like that. I will not worry too much about the uh, threads. I will just cut them off once the time comes. But what you do need to make sure is that you really catch all the fabric layers with your stitching. Okay, that's how the inside looks and that's how the front looks like. And also at this point you can use your distress ink and distress the edges of both of these pieces. Now we will get back to our main cover and we will need a piece of fabric for covering the uh, center of our cover. Um, we need to adhere it right onto the spine. So I measured the length of my fabric piece the same way as I did uh, when I prepared a piece of fabric for um, the narrower spine right here. I folded, so first of all the width of this piece is about, about three inches wide. I folded one edge of the fabric and then I just uh, placed it on top of the cover, making sure that I uh, get almost to the edge of the cardstock there. I clipped the fabric to the cardstock and then used my ruler to fold the fabric over it and um, then cut the axis and folded the uh, fabric on the opposite side to get this flap here the same way again as I just explained to you on the example of the narrower spines. I will have this piece handy for later on, but we're going to work on something else right now. We will now dedicate our attention to the remaining two lightweight chipboard pieces. We're also going to wrap these in the same uh, kind of fabric. I have a piece here that I have prepared, the same piece will be used for the second chipboard cover and it is about in my case about seven inches wide by about 11 inches long so what I'm going to do first of all is just apply some glue to one side of this whole piece Now I will center it on top of the fabric. Make sure that I don't have any bubbles and take it to my ironing board. Here we go. Now it's glued down and ironed. I'll do the same with the second piece. We have our chipboard piece attached to the fabric. Now I'm going to apply the glue along the shorter edges of the chipboard piece and fold my fabric over. Iron it. Do the same on the opposite side. Now to treat the corners before we uh, glue the uh, next set of flaps, we're going to cut the fabric, the folded one, right along the edge of the chipboard and then I'm not reaching all the way uh, to the corner and I'm going to cut this little section off do the same from this side cut it off and now Add the glue only here in the corner. Might be a little bit messy, so I have something underneath. 
Next, I am folding the fabric at an angle, like so, making sure that everything is flat. I can iron on top just to make sure that it's really flat and looks nice. Do the same on the opposite corner. Now I will apply the glue along the long edge of the chipboard piece and fold the fabric on top, making sure that I don't have any bulk, extra bulk in the corners. Okay, like so. Let's iron. I think I have a bit of glue there showing, so I'm using a piece of just plain paper. This is my daughter's drawing <laughs> that she doesn't need anymore. It was not a successful one. As she said, let's treat our corners the same way on the opposite side. You will have to wrap the second cover the same way. And I have already done that. So both of my lightweight chipboard pieces are covered with fabric. And I'm going to distress the edges of both of the pieces on the inside and on the outside. Next, I want to get back to our narrow spines and make sure that we um, crease the folds again. I even use my bone folder. Next, I want to take my uh, Distress ink and add it to the folds. This way, I will see better up to where I need to glue these down to the inside covers of my uh, journal. I also just trimmed the threads without pulling them to the inside of the spines or anything, just trimmed them close to the edges of the paper. We will now get back to our uh, main cover and trim the fabric on the flaps which are still unglued. We will trim it close to the edge of the chipboard without getting all the way to the very corner. And then trim at an angle from the outside towards the corner. You'll get this. Now I'll do the same on all of the corners. Next, I want us to take one of the narrow spines and since you can't see where exactly the fold is, we're going to uh, cut at an angle and snip the corner off. The same thing here. So I leave about one eighth of an inch from the fold to the place where I cut on this side, the narrow side, and then on the long side I go about maybe a quarter inch up from the cardstock and snip it like that. So I'll do the same on the opposite side and the same here. Now I'm going to take one of the spines and I'm going to apply the glue to one of its flaps. Now the glue here that I'm going to use will be a stronger glue. I'm using um, this type of glue. This is the Uhu or Yuhu 
all-purpose adhesive. Um, you're welcome to use fabric tack if you have one. I'm going to apply it to one of the flaps and then just depends how you find it better and more convenient to look at it but we have to glue it down along the edge of the cover just like so on this side as well as on the opposite side but I'll do it later. Let's finish with this side first. So we have it glued down. I can either fold it flat like so to make sure that it's all straight and even and that the edges are lined up. I think we will have to uh, take care of the second spine as well since we can fold this fabric and glue it down only once we have both of the spines attached to our main cover. So let's do that. Next I'm going to get back to my glue stick and treat the corners. I'm going to apply the glue only in one of the corners and fold the fabric here at an angle the exact same way as we did before. And now I will apply the glue to this whole section. I can again just maybe use the uh, pencil to sketch a line so that I uh, see better up to where the glue will reach. Treat the opposite side the same way. This is what we have so far. We will need to add the distress ink uh, along the edges which don't have any ink on them. We have that piece of fabric that we have prepared before, if you remember. We're going now to glue it down to our cover. And we are almost, almost done with creating our base cover for the journal. So as you can see, I am applying the glue to the center of the spine first. And I'm going now to take this piece and make sure that I position it centered on top. I smooth it down with my fingers. And then I use my bone folder to make sure that I glue it down. I will, of course, use my ironing board again. Now I can work on the sides of the fabric flaps. Next we are going to choose some papers for our covers. And these are the papers that I chose. I'll give you all the measurements. For my front cover, I'm going to use this pattern. And this will be the one that uh, will embellish the back cover of our journal. Both of them measure the same, eight and a half inches by five and three quarters. Before I will be gluing them down, I want to add um, a closure for my journal and I think I'll go with this seam binding here. Um, the colors seems to match nicely together and each one of the ribbons is about 14 inches long in my case. 
I will uh, glue each one of the ribbons down to both the front and the back cover of my journal. For doing that, I have already marked um, a place. The middle will be a four and three eighths of an inch away, either from the top or from the bottom of the cover. In centimeters, it will be about 11. So I'm going to just Add some glue I don't have to add a lot because I'm going to stitch the front cover uh, later on so I'm just going to secure this ribbon right here before I forget to attach it and the same placement same measurements go for the back cover of the journal so I'm just going to secure the ribbon in there. I'm not going to glue the papers uh, right away because there might be some more additional elements that uh, I would want to add. I haven't thought about it quite yet. So let's just uh, move on to some of the papers that we're going to use for embellishing the inside panels of our uh, journal cover. For the papers that will go on the inside of the cover, I have also chosen the patterns already. The papers measure the same as the ones that we're going to use for our front surfaces and this will be eight and a half by five and three quarters. Uh, you can see which patterns exactly from the paper collection I chose. I have also chosen the patterns, the same patterns for uh, these parts of the cover and both of the pieces right here will measure eight and a half by four and three quarters. Now uh, on one of the panels, I'm definitely going to add some pockets, but those pockets have to be not very bulky. So uh, for that purpose, I have prepared a few um, paper strips and this is just craft cardstock which was um, stained with some vintage photo uh, distress stain. Um, let me also tell you what's the measurement for each one of the strips. It's three quarters of an inch by four and a quarter. I'm going to have three um, pockets on this page panel so to say and um, I want to glue them down to this paper piece and then I'm going to use a die. It's a die from La La Land Crafts. I really like to use it for um, creating easy pockets. For gluing them down I will need to mark the areas first and I'm not sure that you will be able to see uh, the lines on video that I have created, or maybe yes, they're <laughs> supposed to be quite faint. So from the bottom of the page, I have first marked, using a ruler and a pencil, I have marked um, some um, lines here. So the first line is going to be at one and three quarters of an inch from the bottom of the page. Then the second one will be at um, four and one eighth. And the third one will be at six and a half. Each one of those strips will have to be uh, placed um, along the uh, lines so that the imaginary line goes through the center of each one of the strips just like that and once I glue these down to the paper piece I'm going to use a die and I run it through my die cutting machine uh, three times to get the um, slots for my pockets If you don't have the die, it is also quite easy to cut the slots without it. But I like the fact that I get the stitching from uh, the die. So if you don't have the die, you will just um, kind of continue the line on top 
of your uh, brown paper strip and then you will use your um, circle punch to uh, punch out the um, circles um, at the end of the cut line. And this is how it will look like once uh, finished. I can glue this page down. When I do it, I will apply glue, of course, uh, all around the edges. Since I want to prevent the cards that I'm going to put inside from sliding all the way to the bottom of the paper, I'm going to add glue on top of each one of the slots. And as a matter of fact, here I can add the glue even to this whole area. Now I'm ready to glue it down to my lightweight chipboard panel. Try to center it. Let's just make sure that we're really able to put some cards inside. I really like how it looks. All the cards are, of course, from the paper collection. Before gluing the um, paper to the front cover of my journal, I also want to add a few more elements now to it. I have the craft cardstock strips right here and each one of them measures one and a half inch by three quarters so on the long side it's folded in half and I also rounded some corners only on one side because the other side will not be uh, seen anyway uh, I'm going to glue them down about one inch away from this edge of the paper so let me flip it to the back and use my pencil for uh, marking that one inch in there. And this third piece will go on um, this side of the page. So I also need to see where the center is and it will be at four and a quarter, which is about 10.8 uh, in centimeters. So four and a quarter. All right, I think now we are ready to glue this page down to the front cover. Next, I'm going to do some stitching. Since the cover is too big to fit into the sewing machine, we will need to do it in stages. I'm going to stitch a line right here along this edge first, like that, and I'm going to pull the threads here to the back. Now, I want to say that stitching is not um, necessary. It just adds to my peace of mind that everything will stay uh, secure over time but again if you're using a glue uh, which is strong enough that's that's okay you don't need to stitch or if you think that your sewing machine will not be uh, tough enough to uh, deal with um, all of the layers that we have here which is paper chipboard and the fabric and then another piece of fabric on this side. Um, so yeah, I added the line of stitching right here. Now I'm going to flip um, the cover like so and run another line of stitching along this edge on the back cover. Also don't forget to increase the stitch length at least to three millimeters when you're stitching through chipboard. And it's done. I'm going to pull the threads to the back, as I might have already mentioned, and just tie double knots and uh, cut the um, excess thread off. I also like to add a drop of glue 
on top of the knot just to make sure that um, the thread is secure and the knot is not gonna um, untie. This is what we have now. Next we're going to stitch again all around the outer edges of our main journal cover including the spine and here is how it looks right now. I want to stress stitch only if you are 100% sure that your sewing machine can handle this job. We will take care now of our inner flaps that we have prepared and I think I'm going to start with the one on um, the front cover. It will be on my left hand side. I'm going to glue this whole piece onto the uh, flap on the side of the cover. Now I'm ready to once again take it to my sewing machine and add a line of stitching along this edge first and only after that stitch the remaining three sides. And this is how it will look like. Everything is securely stitched on this side. Let's think now about uh, the inside flap which is going to be stitched to our back cover. I think that according to the same principle that we used for creating pockets on this um, side of um, the flap, I'm going to do the same here, but um, this flap will be for a larger size of the journaling cards. If you measure from the top of the page, the line will be at three inches and at six. And you will glue your paper strips, which are again three quarters by four and a quarter. You will glue them along uh, those lines, making sure that you center everything nicely. I have die cut the slots on my pockets. Now I am ready to glue the page down. Now we are again ready to apply the glue to our flap. Glue the flap down right up to the fold on the hinge that we have for it. Make sure that you line up the bottom edge of this a part of the cover with the chipboard piece underneath and we'll stitch again. I will rotate this. I'll stitch right here first and then along the remaining three edges. And it's done. Now we have a super long cover. We can uh, keep on working on embellishing our cover now. First I think I'm going to add some brads so I'm just eyeballing where I want them to be, poking a hole and then putting a bread. All four of them have been installed. Now I was thinking about the spine. What I wanted to do um, to the spine and I think at this point I'm going to stamp different numbers uh, on the spine on the outside. I'm still not sure about the inside. This way it looks more interesting. Next we will work on the inside uh, flaps and pockets that our journal cover will have. I added some stamping here on the inside of the spine. I suggest that we start from um, this flap right here. I have prepared a few uh, paper pieces for it and I will give you the measurements. I have also done some prep work on um, this paper piece and I will explain uh, what I did. This paper layer that will mat the inside of one of the flaps 
measures eight and a half by four and three quarters. This paper piece will form a vertical pocket that will be glued on top of um, the previous paper layer. You're going to need um, a piece in any pattern from the collection that you're going to choose. The measurement for this is eight and a half by two and three quarters in my case. To make it look more interesting, I decided to uh, create a notch using the envelope punch board and also punch out some um, openings using my circle punches. Um, the larger one was one and three eighths and the smaller one was one inch. Then to create some frames, I also used um, circle punches in bigger sizes. And in the back, I have added some acetate pieces. I'm going to add glue along three edges of this paper piece. And then I'm going to glue it on top of the larger piece. If you want to add some stitching, now would be the time, but on the inside, I'm not going to use my uh, sewing machine, so I'm just going to glue it down um, straight away, and uh, we will keep on working on the next section of the cover. I will choose the journaling cards for this flap later on. Now we will work on the next section of the cover and I have also prepared some pieces for it. The largest background paper piece for this section of the cover is going to measure eight and a half by five and three quarters. I'm going to glue it down right now. This section, according to my plan, will have two see-through horizontal pockets and they will be positioned like so. I have uh, made one pocket and this is how it looks like. It has three hinges that will help us to um, attach the pocket onto our page. The uh, layers that you're going to need for making this pocket include a piece of uh, craft cardstock and this one measures five and a quarter by three inches. The next layer is your uh, pattern paper and that's the pattern that I chose for my pockets. I love these squirrels, they're so cute. The paper piece measures two and seven eighths by five and one eighth. A piece of acetate that I have here is of the same size as the pattern paper. And then for the hinges, we're going to need three pieces for each one of the pockets. Two of the shorter hinges measure three inches long, just like our pocket base. And they're one inch wide. They're scored down the center so that we can fold them in half like that. And then the longer hinge measures five and a quarter. And it is also one inch wide, scored down the center. Now to create the perfect 45 degrees angle on our hinges so that it's easier to layer them together, you're going to take um, both of the pieces and slide them like so one inside the other making sure that you have um, the edge being flush on this side and then the other edge will kind of stop in the fold there so here we have a straight angle of 90 degrees and then you're going to take your scissors and cut diagonally from this point of intersection between two up to the corner there just like so and you will have a few pieces that will need to be discarded but here you have 
a great 45 degrees angle. Then you will just rotate the pieces and um, slide them one inside the other again. And once again, cut. Now with the uh, longer hinge, in my case, I have only one because I have used the second one. If I had the second one, I would do the same way. I would just keep them together. But since I don't have it, I will just use one of the corners that I have already trimmed before as a template. And I will cut the corners on this hinge as well. Next, I'm going to take the craft cardstock and the pattern paper and I will glue both of them together. You will see that the pattern paper one is smaller than the craft cardstock, so you will just have to uh, center it nicely when you glue it down like that. Now, I have a border of half an inch right here. And for uh, creating the opening, I actually used the frame punch board. Um, that's what I'm going to do now. If you don't have the frame punch board, that is absolutely fine. You will just need to make more uh, measurements. And you will simply measure half an inch from each one of the edges of this paper piece. And then use your uh, craft knife to cut out the um, opening in the center. So that's just more work in terms of measuring, but with the frame punch board, it's really easy. I just set the stoppers at half an inch and I rotate the piece and just punch. And next I just need to uh, finish this line from one punched corner to the other. We will take the hinges now and that piece of acetate that we had from before. I'm going to apply glue to one half of the hinge only and I will glue it down like so to one of the shorter sides of our frame. It is not a pocket yet. So this is how it will look like. The same thing will have to be done on the opposite side. Now I will look at the pattern. The hinge, the long hinge, will have to be glued down to this side, which will be the bottom of the pocket. I will make a mark in the back of the frame. You can see that we are able to glue our hinge down between the two previous ones nicely. Now we are ready to add the acetate piece. It will be a little bit smaller than the uh, craft cardstock base and it will uh, not get all the way to the folds of the hinges. What I like to do is to add some glue right around the opening first of all and then along the edges of the acetate. Now I'm ready to glue it down. And here is our second pocket. So let's see where exactly we glue those down onto our background page. I think I'll go about a quarter of an inch away from the bottom, as well as about a quarter of an inch from each uh, one of the sides. Super easy, I think, with this one. We will not have any problem lining it up. So let's just add some glue and glue it the way we agreed upon. Okay, we will think what uh, will be put inside each one of those pockets later. So the second one, I think, will be good if we glue it down about one inch away from the first one. You can either eyeball or measure. I have a template here. So I will use my 
uh, template. If you don't have a template, which is exactly one inch, you can um, use maybe any of the rulers that you have on hand. This one is a little bit wider than one inch, but um, this pocket will still be okay. I mean, I think so. So you will have to, uh, to decide where you want to glue your pocket. I will go about one inch away from the top of the previous pocket. We might add some more decorative elements later, but we are now ready to move to the next section of our cover. And this one, according to my plan, uh, will have a few um, really thin notebooks that I plan to create using these uh, file folders which are included in the paper collection almost always. So the background piece of paper that I have here will measure eight and a half by five and three quarters. That's the pattern that I chose. And I have already uh, sketched some lines that will help me and will guide me um, when I uh, stitch these uh, little notebooks onto the page. For each one of the file folders, I have here two super plain pieces of graph paper. And in my case, those measure six and one eighth by five. Then I folded each one of them in half and they are a perfect match for the inside of this file folder. If we want to position them nicely on the page, and I have already uh, figured out the placement for these, so I'm going to uh, give you those measurements. This is how they will look on the page, like so, and each one of them will be stitched down the uh, fold to the background paper. So you will be able to write in each one of these super thin notebooks and you will be able to flip through them. I have here the lines, three lines as a matter of fact, that I have sketched. I just wanted to reinforce the paper in those areas where I'll have the stitching. So I'll start it from the bottom line here. Let me show you the measurements, but uh, you will have to make them on the front, on the face of your pattern paper. So uh, do it lightly with a pencil, as I did here. But the line, the bottom line, will be three eighths of an inch away from the edge of your uh, paper. Then the second line will be at two and three eighths, if you just keep on measuring. So three eighths of an inch, then two and three eighths. And the third line will be at four and three eighths. On top of each one of those lines, I added some clear tape. You're going to fold your file folder and then line up the fold with that line that you have created. Try to be exact, then just make sure that the file folder is about the same distance away from the left uh, and the right hand side of your paper. I think I need larger clips here because the tiny ones just don't reach. Okay, here we have it. Okay, now I'm going to take my stapler and just um, use two staples for our purposes. I'm going to actually flip 
this paper piece to the back side. So I will start with just poking a hole about one inch away from the edge of the file folder that I can see on this side. And then I will see where the second hole needs to be. Okay, here. So then you will put your staple inside, close it here. I think I'm not going to stitch. I'll just keep on doing this. So again, I will just make the first hole and then measure where the second one needs to be. And I will put the staple in. And fold the prongs on this side. We will fold our file folder again. You might feel that the fold now is not going to be in the very same place where it was, but that's okay. Our improvised notebook is attached now to the uh, background paper piece. So we will do the same with the second file folder. I'm going to open it, find the fold, and line the fold up with the line that I have right here. I'm also going now to use the uh, previously attached file folder and lining up the left and the right sides of this folder with the previously attached one. We can clip. Okay. Now the same thing. Let's just measure about, well, it doesn't have to be the same. So I will go about one and a half inch from the edge and I can already mark the one and a half inch hole from this side. I'll poke it through, poke it through, and now take more staples. Check where the second hole needs to be. Pierce it and add the staple. The same way you're going to attach the third file folder. So again, just refold the file folder to make sure that we have it nice and flat. Here we are. Three of them are now attached. And I think I have some of the pages slightly offset, but it's okay, it doesn't bother me. We are now ready to glue down our page to the cover. And I think I'm going to add some um, runner glue. I think that's how it's called, right? Uh, right on top of each one of those um, clear tape areas. And then I will add just some regular wet glue to the areas with a uh, paper. We have that done. So uh, we can add maybe more labels from the paper collection if we want to between each one of the file folders uh, later. We will also need to erase the lines if they are visible and I wanted to add another little pocket here at the top since we have so much room um, that's the pocket from the paper collection and I am going to glue it down I'm going to apply the glue only to the long hinge at the bottom 
and let's see where our pocket needs to be. Let's say here. Okay. Now once this hinge is glued down, I will add a piece of clear tape on top of it. And this way, once you uh, slide your cards or tags inside the pocket, they don't get caught on the edge of the hinge itself. They just slide inside the pocket easier. And now we can apply more glue to the side hinges and finish gluing our pocket down to the page. These are some tags from the paper collection that will be stored inside that pocket. Okay, we are left with this section here and I have an idea for it as well. We will start with a piece of pattern paper that measures eight and a half by four and three quarters. I want to add just a decorative element on the side of this page. So I decided to use one of the strips from the cut apart sheets and one of the labels and I want the label to move on that strip. So for doing that I have first just wrapped some plain paper around the paper strip and I glued the edges of those paper pieces so that they stay on top of the strip and then I just glued my label to those paper pieces and now this is like a buckle that can be uh, slided on top of our uh, paper strip or paper belt. I think it looks very nice. I like to do that sometimes in my journals to add this element. I think it's fun. So uh, next I'm going to glue it down onto the page. Of course only at the top and at the bottom so that we can still move our decorative element. And I want to stay fairly close to one of the edges. On the rest of the area, I thought that we could use some pockets and cards from the paper collection. So I um, have cut out the pockets which were included. And then I also um, cut one of the uh, pattern sheets um, into folded journaling cards and then I just added some die cut numbers both to the pockets and the cards here. Now we have to decide again where exactly we want the pockets to be glued down. I think they will be pretty um, tight fit. They will be very close one to another but I hope that will work. So I will start with the bottom one. It's the easiest way of doing it. Again, I will apply the glue only to the bottom hinge and glue it down and add a piece of tape on top and then add the glue to the side flaps or side hinges and glue the rest of the pocket down. Take the second pocket and okay we actually have to keep our third card in the third pocket so that we know that it doesn't stick um, out from the page. I will take my pencil and make two dots in the corners where I want my pockets to be. One and two. Okay, I can see them. So now I will just glue down 
the pockets and um, get back to you. Once you have your pockets attached to the background paper piece, you can go ahead and glue it down to the last uh, unembellished section of our journal cover. And this is how it will look like. I think it's a good time now to work on the signatures for our journal. And it will have two signatures. Each one of them will be attached to the narrow spines on the cover. I have built my signatures already. Each one of the Victoria Designs paper collections includes 24 uh, journaling pages designs. And I have printed all 24 of them on um, both sides of the papers. So in total, I have 12 printed on both sides pages. In each one of the signatures, I will only have six of those double-sided pages mixed with additional tea dyed papers. If you want, you can add uh, more uh, papers to these signatures like book pages or different receipts, um, maybe envelopes, maybe some more um, die cuts, whatever your heart desires. But mine are going to have only uh, tea dyed papers and the printed ones. To make the tea dyed papers less boring, I already uh, stenciled on all of them and stamped. I had to go through the stash of my stamps and <laughs> try to find some with um, the animals. I found out that I didn't have a lot of those, so I stamped <laughs> where I could. And then in other places, I just used some um, not very attached to a certain theme stamps with um, some letters or just uh, postage stamps, some insects, and so on. That's the signatures. Now, for attaching the signatures, we're going to poke the holes in each one of those spines as I mentioned before and I think I will go with three holes pamphlet stitch I think it will be enough for holding the amount of pages that I have right here we need to decide where the holes will be if my page is eight and a half inches tall the uh, central hole will be at four and a quarter and then I think I want to have uh, two more holes three quarters of an inch away from um, the top and the bottom so I'm going to mark them here now I want to mark them on the front of the cover uh, rather than on the inside because I can better see where the middle on that spine will be and I will just mark with a little dot the future place for poking the holes. I will also need to poke them in the signatures so I will need to measure once again on the inside of the page where those holes need to be. Use the clips for holding my pages together and then just poke the holes like that. You're going to use three hole pamphlet stitch in order to attach your signature to the spine on the side and I will follow the same steps and attach my second signature to the second spine on this side of the cover. Both of my signatures are now attached to the spines and I will 
have fun with embellishing the pages of each one of the signatures off camera. I have all of my elements already uh, pre-cut. I want to say a few words about embellishing the cover. I have prepared this element which consists of some of the cut out elements from the paper collection. There are two of the swirls. There is this um, label with the forest and a little circle with the squirrel as well as the leaf with the butterfly. The frame itself was created with the help of an oval die that I had in my stash. You are welcome to use any other shape. I have just added um, a piece of acetate to the window and put one of the um, cut apart elements with this deer inside um, that window. The numbers that you see here are the um, pieces that I just didn't want to throw away and they are the uh, parts of that um, die cut that I created for uh, these pockets. They're so tiny and so delicate that I was happy to uh, enclose them behind the piece of acetate. I can uh, be sure that they're not going to fall off and I think they add a more interest to the uh, frame itself. So I'm just going to glue this whole thing down to the front of my journal and work on the rest of the signatures pages. I also want to add an eyelet here and maybe add some charms or some beads um, to the threads that I'm going to use here. And it will also be easier to pull the journal by that whole uh, tassel of beads and charms um, and take it out of the compartment where it will be stored. Now that our fourth journal for the junk journaling station is complete, let's work on the pencil holder. We will need a few pieces of medium weight chipboard for uh, making it. And the first piece that will be used for the bottom is going to measure three and a quarter by three and a quarter. You will also need two additional pieces that will measure three and a quarter by four inches and two more that will measure three and three eighths by four inches. And I'm going to begin with attaching two of the side panels, which are three and a quarter by four, to the uh, bottom square piece. And for doing that, I will first of all need two hinges, two paper hinges. I use a craft cardstock for those and this pair of hinges measures three and a quarter inch long by one inch wide. As you can see the hinge is scored down the uh, center and I'm going to uh, use liquid glue for uh, adhering my hinges to the chipboard pieces. You are welcome to use double-sided squirt tape. I just like to use a uh, glue and as you have seen, I have applied glue for now only to one half of the hinge. And then I'm gluing the hinge down by that half to the chipboard piece, making sure that I can still uh, fold the second half of the hinge at a straight angle. I will do the same on the opposite side of the square chipboard base. We have both of these pieces right here. We're going to apply glue to this section of the hinge on each one of the sides and we will then hold the chipboard piece at a straight angle and right next to the square piece of chipboard and we will fold the hinge from 
this side and adhere it to the future wall of our pencil holder. Let's do the same on the opposite side with the second hinge. The same thing. I will attach this panel right next to the square piece, hold it, and glue down the hinge. And then once the glue is set, I can unfold. We will need four additional hinges that will again measure three and a quarter by one inch. They're folded down the center. And I didn't mention the previous uh, time when I glued these hinges down that I went ahead and trimmed the corners. This will eliminate the paper bulk in the corners as we um, continue working on this project. So right now I will apply glue to one half of each one of those hinges and glue them down flush with the edges of the square central chipboard piece like that. Just make sure that there are no overhangings and when you fold the piece to uh, the other side you don't see the hinge. We'll do that on all four sides like so. We have all of our hinges glued down to the central square piece of chipboard and now I am going to use the double-sided tape for the remaining halves of the hinges. It will be easier uh, to glue them down to the side panels later on. Next, I'm going to work with the remaining two panels. I will need two hinges that will measure three and three eighths of an inch long by one inch wide. They will be scored as usual down the center and they will have snipped off corners. And I'm going to glue them down right here. So again, I will just apply glue now to the inside of the hinge to only one half of it. And then I will attach the hinge to the chipboard piece up to the fold. I'll do the same on this one. Don't forget to burnish. And now we are ready to attach these to the square base of our future uh, pencil holder and you will actually see where exactly you need to put them because this piece, the one that I have in my right hand, will later on cover the previous two and in the assembled um, state. This will look like so. Look at the corners. This is the wider piece and this is the narrower piece. I'm going to apply glue to this part of the hinge and while keeping this chipboard piece at a straight angle on the surface, I will add my a ready-made piece from before to it and make sure that I line up the corners of the chipboard pieces here at the top and at the bottom with the corners of the pieces that have been glued down to the square piece in the center and now I'll do the same from this side We'll need another piece of um, craft cardstock for matting the bottom section um, of our pencil holder from the outside. And 
This piece is going to measure three and one eighth by three and one eighth. I'm going to glue it down. If you are going to use for the feet of your pencil holder any type of breads, you will need to poke the holes now in each one of the corners, set the breads in, and only then uh, take another piece of pattern paper this time, and that's the pattern that I chose. This piece also measures three and one eighths by three and one eighths. So once you will have your breads in place, you will then cover this inside area of your pencil holder with a piece of pattern paper. If you are not going to poke any holes and uh, you will, like me, just glue the feet to the box, you can glue the pattern paper piece down right now. Next, I'm going to need four hinges that uh, will be four inches long and I will glue a pair of those to the sides of the uh, panels, which are three and three eighths of an inch wide. I'm going to add the liquid glue to one half of the hinge. Do the same on the opposite side of the panel. And we'll do the same on the edges of this opposite panel, like so. Now on the remaining halves of the hinges, I will apply double-sided tape. Now we are ready to do some assembling of all the panels that we have created. We'll start by removing the uh, backing from each one of the hinges which are attached to the square center and then we will burnish to make sure that everything uh, is glued down nicely there. Now you can see that when I lift the side panel with the hinges attached to it, it kind of already sets in place and the edge of this panel on my left hand side already covers the um, panel that we have just lifted and that's what we need so what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the backing from this hinge and then while I form a straight corner here between both of the panels I will hold it with my finger and I will glue down the hinge on this side like that. And now I can remove the backing from the side hinge here and still making sure that I have a straight angle, I can attach that paper piece to the first panel of our uh, pencil holder. Now we'll do the same here and here. Our corners look nice. Let's just burnish better all of the hinges. Next I will need four hinges to reinforce the inside corners of my future pencil holder and if these hinges will be just a tiny bit shorter than four inches long. As you can see they're maybe one sixteenth of an inch shorter. In centimeters it will be um, 10 centimeters exactly. So I want this step to be less messy, so I decided to use the double-sided tape. I will 
or remove the backing from the hinge. And then I will add just a line of glue to the very corner before adhering this hinge down. Make sure that you land this hinge exactly in the corner. And since you have the glue there, it will help you wiggle it a little bit and put it in the uh, correct place exactly where it needs to be. Okay, there is a little bit of glue oozing there. It will dry clear, so I'm not worried about that. Let's keep on working the same way on the three remaining corners. And it's done. All four of them are set in place. I will need two additional hinges, which will be three and a quarter inch wide, like these panels, but I'm going to glue them down on top of the edges of the panels, which are three and three eighths. So I will cover the raw edges of the chipboard here on top with these hinges and you're welcome to use either your double-sided tape again or the liquid glue. I usually apply the glue only to one half of the hinge and I make sure that I'm able to line it up between the side panels. Let's make sure that we burnish and then I unfold the second half of the hinge, apply a bit of glue to the very edge of the chipboard itself and then to the second half of the hinge and I glue it down while burnishing on the very top and then folding it in and burnishing on the inside. This way you will have a super nice looking edge. Let's do the same on the uh, opposite side. This is a three and three eighths inch wide panel. And what's left is only to cover the edges of the two remaining panels. For that, we will need two hinges, which measure three and, as you can see, slightly more than three eighths. You see that? Maybe one sixteenth of an inch more than three and three eighths. So that's what I'm going to do. I will prepare two hinges that will measure that long. And of course you will score them down the center and uh, trim the corners. And I will glue them down now the same way I did before with only one difference. So let's just start with applying the glue to one half of the hinge and making sure that we do our best to cover the corners like so. Okay, and now when you fold the hinge in, you will see that maybe in the corners here, you will need to trim a little bit more to make sure that the hinge fits uh, better inside the box. But you don't want to cut very close to the uh, corners themselves. Now I think it's fine. It fits inside. It does cover the corners of the chipboard. And I think I can now take the glue and just as before, add a bit of it to the very edge of the chipboard and then to the rest of the paper hinge. Burnish while gluing the paper down. 
and fold it in and burnish again. Now let's do the same on the opposite side, like so. Now it might be a good time to distress all the visible edges of your pencil holder. Let's mat the inside panels of our pencil holder. I have here two uh, pattern paper pieces that measure three inches by three and a quarter. And I'm going to glue them down inside to the panels which are wider. When gluing it down, I will just make sure that I leave sort of equal borders on the left and the right hand side as well as about one eighth of an inch um, here close to the top edge just like so and then for the remaining two inside panels you will need to get two more uh, pattern papers three and one eighth by three and three quarters these are the patterns that I chose and you glue them down the same way and on the inside we have our pencil holder fully covered with the pattern paper. Let's now cover it with the beautiful pattern paper from the collection on the outside as well. These papers will have all four of them uh, to measure three and a quarter by three and seven eighths. And I must say, I had to play uh, with the papers a little bit and um, try to cut them from different sections of uh, different patterned sheets so that I could cut the most part of each one of the animals. And for example, here, I really wanted to have a giraffe but then I thought that I wanted to have a zebra, but if I cut the uh, zebra as my focal point on this paper piece, then the giraffe would not have the head, and I decided not to go in that direction, so that's why my giraffe only has the head and doesn't have the body, and I will maybe use the uh, zebra somewhere else. So now let's glue all of the papers down to our uh, panels and I will get back to you. This is how it looks like. Very simple but so beautiful because of the papers. They're so gorgeous. I was going to use my super glue and these little feet for gluing them down to the corners of the box but turned out that the corners of the box were too perfect for the feet because look it's just if I attach it tightly to the side of the box on the left hand side then there it just sticks out so I decided not to use those feet I found these ones and I thought that especially with the image of the lion here it could look nice so I will go ahead and use this set of the feet that I happened uh, to have in my stash as well I purchased these uh, quite a while ago try searching on Amazon as well if you don't want to invest in these you can also use uh, some type of wooden uh, chips of any shape. I happen to have um, these cute little flowers. I'm going to glue the feet down now and then get back to you again. This is how the pencil holder looks like now. If you want to uh, preserve it for longer and make sure that it doesn't get dirty from the pans and pencils that you're going to keep inside. I recommend to cut a piece of acetate and this one is three and one eighth by three and one eighth and just put it inside and maybe change it from time to time if it gets dirty. Our big project of the junk journaling station and all 
the journals and uh, different pieces that uh, went inside is complete. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were able to follow along. Uh, if you did and you have, um, just like me, a full set of the journals now ready, please share those with us, with me and with Tina from Victoria Designs on social media. Tag us. We would love to see what you made. Talk to you soon. Bye.